a year that seems to be completely full of just religion-based, priest-based, exorcism-based movies in the horror genre, it was great to see something that was a little bit more folklore, a little bit more thrillery, but still very engaging and at times pretty damn scary. And for that, I have Chris Cronin to thank, the director of The Moor. I'm really happy to finally get to talk about it because it is out there now and you can go and see it, you can go and rent it, you can go buy it, you can go get it. Does anybody rent anything anymore? You can get this movie, The Moor or The Moor or whatever you want to call it, The Moor. Um, you can get this movie right now. We're going to talk about it in a second. My name is Kevin Halden. This is Nerdly Out Loud, the official channel of nerdly.co.uk, your favourite British home for all the news, reviews and exclusive interviews. We like to cover everything from the big budget to the low budget to the no budget with a special keen interest on the lower end of the scale. And that's what this movie is. Director Chris Cronin has come out with a little bit of a banger. It's a nice slow burn horror thriller folklore tale and we're going to talk about it in a quick hot second. But first of all, hit that like, hit that subscribe thing, that notification bell so you do not miss any more uploads, whether it be an interview, a review or anything else that ends in ooh that I am going to bring to you. And we know how it goes. I am always going to do the same thing, and that is I will run through the plot of the movie, talk about the cast and the crew of the movie, get into what I did and didn't like about the movie, and then get on to my final Nerdly Out Loud rating. That is my rating, not the rating of Nerdly on the whole, because there will be other reviews for this movie over on nerdly.co.uk. Go over, see what everybody else thought. So the Moor is a really, really tense, character-based, kind of noir, folklore thriller set on the moors claire played by sophia laporte who is kind of like a podcaster um slash mystery sort of investigator that's kind of her her niche and she is approached by a childhood friend's father who we get a little bit of a flashback we get a little bit at the start of the movie where we see a young boy and girl going into a shop and the girl wants the boy to cause a little bit of a distraction so that she can nick some sweets because she's a little bit of a rebel she steals the sweets she runs out um the boy doesn't come out for a little while and immediately that's when the tension's starting because i'm a parent so instantly i was like no 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 don't want any of this give me something else but she goes back into the store she asks the shopkeeper where her brother is and apparently her brother has left with her dad no he hasn't he's been kidnapped and we get a whole bunch of newspaper articles a whole bunch of headlines showing us that this is something that has been happening in that area for some time we cut forward to the present day and that is when we get the father of the girl who's now approaching Claire because he feels like he maybe knows where the boy has gone, where the child is, and it's on the titular moor. So he wants her to come back. She doesn't really want to come back, but you know what? It might be good for a little bit of podcast content. It might be good for a little bit of closure for herself. So they go back, and when they go back, we get a little bit more backstory through the kind of the interviews from the townsfolk. Some of the townsfolk know a little bit more than we do obviously so that's how we're going to get a little bit of um exposition i guess they're going to tell her a little bit about that but all of this is just slowly building up the tension building up the drama we want to get there but we don't want to get there yet and then when we do that's when the moor takes over that's when the landscape the scenery the setting everything takes over and now we are stuck in this and this is where we are but we are also joined by a father and daughter duo in the form of Alex and Eleanor. Eleanor has these kind of psychic abilities, sort of. So when she's near it, she can sense it. And I will say that Eleanor, played by Elizabeth Dormer Phillips, is fantastic. What a role this woman plays. I think everybody plays a really, really good part. But Elizabeth Dormer Phillips smashes this out the park. I love this role for her. It was brilliant. It was brilliant. But they go out there, stuff and things start happening. Obviously, we need a story to progress. We need some thrills. We need some chills. We need some horror aspects. We need a couple of jump scares, not too many. Just enough to really kind of keep us on edge. Let's talk about the cast and the crew a little bit right now because I do want to talk about Chris Cronin. I think he's really built a fantastic sort of folk tale here. 
something that you could really get invested in by the fact that we take our time to get there. We take our time to learn who our characters are. We take our time to learn what has happened in the past around this small town. And that's what it is. It's a small town. We're not necessarily talking about a slasher here. We've not got a serial killer just running around and just ripping people apart and all the fun that that entails. We have an actual unknown entity, an unknown serial killer, mass murderer lurking in the background that we don't really get to see it in any particular way, but we're kind of like, we're building around that and you, you feel it though. It is omnipresent, it is always there. Everything just feels like it's gonna come down on you at any second, especially on Claire. We feel Claire has this real big burden on this whole case and this whole story and and we get that we we find out why i'm trying I'm trying to dance around any kind of spoiler talk you do understand why she is doing this you completely understand she's a fantastic character really well laid out really well led and i do think that sophia laporte plays brilliantly and david edward robertson now let's talk about david edward robertson who plays bill the father of the missing child he is wholly believable, unbelievably believable in this role. Every parent, I'm a parent, I've got three girls. I can't even imagine how something like this would feel, how this story would play out in my head if I was in that kind of role. And David Edward Robertson just embodies it. He's so in this role. He is a father. And I love the fact that I could feel it because it meant all the the tenseness, all the environment around him, everything that was seeping in to my every being was just being accentuated by this guy's fear, becoming my fear. That's when you know you've got a great movie. That's when you know the director's doing a great job. He is doing a great job. I do have some issues with the movie. Not many, but I do have some issues. I think the pacing at times is a little bit too slow. We could maybe take a little bit out here and there, but it's not stuff that you're going to take out and I'm going to lose anything. You kind of do gain a little bit, but I don't feel like you gain enough to say, right, this movie needs to be just under two hours. I don't feel like that's a thing for me. So those are little tiny gripes. I think the score's pretty good. Um, I do think at times when it's dark, it's very dark, but we are on the moors. This is kind of a folksy tale. So I kind of get that but a little bit more of being able to see exactly what was going on might have helped in certain places again it's a small grade because it doesn't happen too often but in terms of how the story plays out and how the thriller aspect of this whole thing plays out and the scares and the reveals and the way everything is laid out i can't necessarily bring it down too much for that because i do think chris cronin has done a great job at making this movie and making it what he wanted it to be and what he wanted us to enjoy and see and it's a very enjoyable film i have noticed online it's got some really really cool reviews people really seem to be digging it and um, it's getting some really good positive feedback for the actresses involved sophia laporte and of course elizabeth dorma phillips they are both getting just great plaudits and rightly so like i say elizabeth dorma phillips as eleanor is a treat to watch she really really gives this whole otherworldly aspect she's this kind of actress that you know the the good old days of the the golden age actress who can bring something to the screen and the screen's just alive every time she's on it that's the kind of actress that she is she just brings everything alive on screen you know and and you need something like that in a movie like this because you do have to suspend your disbelief quite a bit at times so what i didn't didn't like uh, the themes the themes are all there i love the theme of the movie i really kind of like that okay it's not necessarily based on some of the stories we know in real life um down south in the yorkshire dales and the yorkshire moors and all that it's not necessarily based on them but it does have a touch of that to it and it, it brings those to mind which are real things that when i talk about suspending your disbelief those things still kind of seep in and of course the child kidnapping at the start of the movie every parent's nightmare i hated seeing that kind of like black mask or black phone a year or two ago with ethan hawk that kind of played that kind of that plays on your mind a little bit but honestly i just think that this movie works 
it works on almost every level. It works where it's supposed to work, it smacks where it's supposed to smack, and it hits you where it's supposed to hit you. And then when it's supposed to give you a fright, you get that fright. And that's what I like because they earned the, the you only get a couple of jump scares, you, not very many, but this movie completely earns your jump. It earns that scare. Whereas a lot of movies, I think, go for the cheap way out and they go for the, the cheap way to get you out of your seat. That to me doesn't always work. So when you build and you build and you build and you build and you play on my mind, you play on my emotions, you play on my psyche, my fear, when you do all of that and then you make me jump or you make me feel, it's because you've earned it. You've absolutely earned it. So Chris Cronin, that is one thing I will absolutely 100% give you on this. You earned every single moment of reaction that you got from me so with that i am just going to jump into my final nerdly out loud rating and again do go to the website the website will have all sorts of people's reviews and everything like that go over there check all them out and see what other people thought of this check out other reviews on other websites because i think the mua is completely worth your time but it might not be for everyone i could see why some people might not like this movie but it's a fantastic addition to this genre to the horror genre and then the folk horror um sub genre within that genre it's a, it's a great addition i think people will like it think about like witch and things like that um the forest all those kind of things that we we get to see and we love this does have a little bit of feeling of that but just with a little bit of an an otherworldly sort of aspect to it with the mist coming in the fog and and stuff like that it's it's a great great movie i am however going to stick it on a 3.5 i want to give this a four i really do but i'm going to give it a 3.5 out of five and it's a very very strong one and a lot of this is to do with i i kind of want to see what chris does next what chris cronin does next i'm a little bit intrigued now you you have my attention and now I just want to see what he does next. And, and I feel like that might be a little bit harsh to knock it down a little bit for that. But honestly, the, the point it loses is really on the, the pacing. This 3.5 out of 5 is a fantastic rating for this movie. I really, really hope you guys take it that way. I would love for people to go and see this in the cinema. I know not every movie can go to the cinema, but I would love people to see it there. I think it deserves to be seen on a huge screen. I would love people just to get it, to see it, let other people know about it, spread the good word of the Moore and Chris Cronin's movie, and let us get the word out on this film because it's cracking. It's a brilliant film. 3.5 out of 5. I will absolutely be watching this again shortly anytime soon i'll be watching this movie again so i'm just going to round it out there and i'll say 3.5 out of 5 uh, my name has been kevin halden this is nerdly out loud the official channel of nerdly.co.uk like subscribe hit that follow hit the notification bell and it will tell you whenever i've made a new upload whether it's an interview a review or anything like that just go and click it it will let you know so you never have to miss another video from me and we all know that you're waiting every single day for that little notification that says Kev's uploaded because he's your guy. My name is Kevin Alden. Three out of five for the Moor. Go and check it out. It's available everywhere now. See you next time.